The SR-71 Blackbird, just the name sounds cool right? But there's so much more to this plane than just a cool name. It's not just a cool name, this plane was the real deal. It was a marvel of engineering and design, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in aviation. Imagine a jet, black as night, flying so high you could barely see it. It soared above commercial airliners, almost touching the edge of space. Now, imagine it flying faster than any other plane, ever. It could outrun missiles and cover vast distances in a matter of hours, that's the Blackbird. It looked like something out of a science fiction movie all sleek and futuristic. Its design was ahead of its time, making it an icon of innovation. And it was built for one purpose, to fly fast and high spying on enemies during the Cold War. It gathered crucial intelligence that shaped global politics. It was a dangerous job, but the Blackbird and its pilots were up to the task. These pilots were some of the best, trained to handle the extreme conditions of high-speed, high-altitude flight. This plane was packed with secrets, secret materials, secret technology, all designed to make it the ultimate spy plane. Its construction used cutting-edge materials that could withstand the intense heat generated at high speeds. And for decades, it was exactly that. The Blackbird flew missions that remain classified to this day, a testament to its enduring legacy. In this story we're going to take a closer look at the SR-71 Blackbird. We'll explore its groundbreaking design and the incredible feats it achieved. We'll learn about its history, its design, and the amazing things it could do. From its inception to its retirement, the Blackbird story is one of unparalleled achievement. Buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. The SR-71 Blackbird is more than just a plane, it's a legend in the skies. The world was a different place back in the 1950s and 60s. It was a time of rapid technological advancements and significant geopolitical tensions. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a tense standoff, the Cold War. This period was marked by an intense arms race and the ever-present threat of nuclear war. Both sides wanted to know what the other was doing and that's where the Blackbird comes in. Intelligence gathering became a crucial aspect of national security. See, the US Air Force needed a new spy plane, something that could fly higher and faster than anything else. They were looking for an aircraft that could provide real-time intelligence without being intercepted. They needed a plane that could outrun missiles and avoid being detected by radar. This was no small feat given the technology of the time. It was a tall order but a team of brilliant engineers at Lockheed Skunk Works, led by the legendary Kelly Johnson, took on the challenge, and they delivered. Their innovative designs and relentless pursuit of excellence made the impossible possible. The result was the A-12, the Blackbird's predecessor. This aircraft was a marvel of engineering, pushing the boundaries of what was thought achievable. It first flew in 1962, and it was like nothing the world had ever seen. Its sleek design and advanced capabilities set it apart from anything that had come before. It was fast, it was stealthy, and it could fly at incredible altitudes. The A-12 was a game-changer in aerial reconnaissance. The A-12 paved the way for the SR-71, which was even bigger and more capable. This new aircraft took the advancements of the A-12 and pushed them even further. The SR-71, designated for strategic reconnaissance, took its first flight in 1964, and it quickly became a legend. Its unmatched speed and altitude capabilities made it an invaluable asset during the Cold War. The Blackbird's design is a big part of what made it so special. It didn't look like any other plane and that's because it wasn't designed like any other plane. Every curve, every angle, every part of the Blackbird was shaped for one thing, speed. The long pointed nose, the slender fuselage, the delta wings, all of these features were designed to reduce drag and allow the Blackbird to slip through the air like a bullet. Even the cockpit was designed with speed in mind. The pilot and the reconnaissance systems officer, or RSO, sat in tandem, one behind the other, in a cramped cockpit with small, thick windows. This design helped the Blackbird cut through the air, but it also meant that the crew had limited visibility. They had to rely on their instruments and their wits to navigate at such high speeds and altitudes. But hey, that's all part of being a Blackbird pilot, right? Building a plane that could fly as fast and as high as the Blackbird wasn't easy. It was a monumental task that required the brightest minds in aerospace engineering. It required pushing the limits of technology and using some pretty exotic materials. The engineers had to innovate at every step, from design to execution. 
one of the biggest challenges was heat. The aircraft's surface could reach temperatures of over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. When you're flying at Mach 3 Plus, the friction from the air generates a lot of heat. This intense heat could easily compromise the structural integrity of the plane. So, much of the Blackbird was built from titanium, a strong lightweight metal that could withstand extreme temperatures. Titanium was not only heat resistant but also incredibly durable. Then there were the engines. These were no ordinary jet engines. The Blackbird was powered by two Pratt and Whitney J-58 engines, some of the most powerful jet engines ever built. These engines were marvels of engineering, designed to operate efficiently at high altitudes and speeds. These engines were so powerful that they could actually melt asphalt when the Blackbird was at full throttle. The sheer power and thrust generated were unprecedented. And let's not forget about the pilots. These brave individuals had to be in peak physical condition. They had to wear special pressurized suits, kind of like astronauts, to survive at those altitudes. These suits were essential for maintaining bodily functions in the thin atmosphere. These suits were so sophisticated that the pilots had to eat a special low-residue diet for 24 hours before each flight to avoid, well, let's just say complications while wearing them. The preparation was as rigorous as the flight itself. Section 5 higher than ever. Life at 80,000 feet. Imagine flying so high that you could see the curvature of the Earth. That's what it was like to fly the Blackbird. It could reach altitudes of over 85,000 feet, putting it well into the stratosphere. Up there, the air is so thin that it's almost like being in space. The sky is black, the stars are out, and the view is absolutely breathtaking. But it's also a very hostile environment. The air pressure is so low that you could pass out in an instant if your pressure suit failed. The temperatures outside the plane could be hundreds of degrees below zero. And then there's the speed. At Mach 3 Plus, everything on the ground seems to be moving in slow motion. It's an incredible experience, one that few people have ever had the privilege of experiencing. Section 6. Blackbird in Action Reconnaissance from Above. The SR-71 Blackbird was designed for one primary mission reconnaissance. Its job was to fly over enemy territory, gather intelligence, and make it back home, all without being detected or shot down. And, you know, it was incredibly good at its job. The Blackbird carried a variety of sophisticated sensors and cameras that could capture incredible detail from high altitudes. It could photograph enemy installations, track troop movements, and even intercept enemy communications. During its service, the Blackbird flew missions all over the world, from Vietnam to the Middle East to the Soviet Union. It provided valuable intelligence that helped shape U.S. foreign policy and military strategy. Section 7, the fastest plane, probably, setting records. The Blackbird wasn't just fast, it was the fastest plane in the world. In fact, it still holds the official speed record for a jet-powered aircraft. In July 1976, a Blackbird piloted by Captain Eldon Urs and Major George Morgan reached an incredible speed of 2,193 miles per hour, or Mach 3.3. There are stories of the Blackbird going even faster, but those speeds have never been officially confirmed. One of the best stories involves a Blackbird pilot being pursued by a surface-to-air missile. As the missile got closer, the pilot was told to just push it. He accelerated, and the Blackbird simply outran the missile. It's a testament to the incredible speed and capabilities of this amazing aircraft. Section 8. Retirement and Legacy, End of an Era Sadly, all good things must come to an end. In 1990, the SR-71 Blackbird was officially retired from service. It was a sad day for aviation enthusiasts everywhere, but the Blackbird's legacy lived on. Several Blackbirds are now on display in museums across the United States, serving as a reminder of a time when the sky was the limit. The Blackbird's impact on aviation is undeniable. It pushed the boundaries of what was possible, inspiring generations of engineers and pilots, it proved that with enough ingenuity and determination, we can achieve incredible things. Section 9. Conclusion, The Legend Lives On. 
The SR-71 Blackbird was more than just a plane, it was a symbol of American ingenuity and technological prowess. It was a reminder that even in the darkest days of the Cold War, there was always room for innovation and daring. Even though the Blackbird is no longer in service, its story continues to inspire. It's a story about pushing the limits, about achieving the impossible, and about the incredible things that can be accomplished when we set our minds to it. So the next time you look up at the sky, remember the Blackbird. Remember the sleek, black shape streaking across the heavens, a testament to the power of human ingenuity. The Blackbird may be gone, but its legend will live on forever.